Hello, everyone. It is now time for our read aloud. We are currently reading The Lowell Mill Girls by Alice K. Flanagan. So we have part four today. We are going to read the last two sections of the book. I hope you enjoy. Getting an Education Education was very important for many of the Mill Girls. Whenever they were not working, they were involved in self-improvement activities. Reading was a big part of their efforts to improve themselves, and it eventually led to more serious studies. In the evenings, a few girls met in the boarding house parlor to study subjects that interested them. When several girls became interested in the same subject, they hired a teacher. It usually cost a dollar to attend 12 evening classes in subjects such as music, art, or French. And here is a picture of Lowell City Hall. The girls also attended lectures, speeches, and special programs and concerts. They occasionally were able to leave the mills early to attend lectures by such gifted speakers as poet Ralph Waldo Emerson, writer Horace Greeley, and former U.S. President John Quincy Adams. Besides attending evening classes and lectures, the young women attended church. Ministers in several churches organized improvement circles where women brought their poems and other writings for discussion. Here is Horace Greeley. Women had begun writing almost from the day the mills were established. By 1840, their writings were being published as a monthly magazine called the Lowell Offering. The small magazine, which was about 30 pages, cost six and one-fourth cents and was edited by two former textile workers, Harriet Jane Farley and Harriet C. Curtis. It was read by people all over New England and even outside the United States. The Lowell Offering, which included poems and articles written by more than 60 women, became very popular. It covered topics such as women's rights, nature and religion, factory life, and local history of New England. One child remembered that her father allowed her to read it on Sunday, and on that day it was placed on the table with the Bible. The Lowell Offering was published until 1845, when Curtis left Lowell. In 1847, Farley started the New England Offering, which was also written by women. It was published until the 1850s. And here is the cover of one of the Lowell offerings. What became of the Mill Girls? Over the years, the Mill Girls worked hard to improve factory and housing conditions. Sometimes they were successful. In October 1836, as many as 2,000 mill girls went on strike or turned out to protest a rent increase. They left their factory jobs to march through the streets and give speeches. They sang the following song. Oh, isn't it a pity such a pretty girl as I should be sent to the factory to pine away and die? Oh, I cannot be a slave. I will not be a slave. For I'm so fond of liberty that I cannot be a slave. The textile companies reversed the rent hike. In 1844, the Lowell Female Labor Reform Association, LFLRA, was organized. Sarah G. Bagley, who worked as a mill girl, was its first president. The LFLRA was the first group of women to fight for a 10-hour workday. They sent petitions to the Massachusetts legislature which resulted in hearings to investigate working conditions. Their efforts proved somewhat successful when in 1847, the textile companies lengthened the time for breakfast and lunch from 30 minutes to 45 minutes. In 1853, workers went on strike for a shorter workday, forcing the Lowell textile companies to shorten the workday to 11 hours. It wasn't until 1874, after a 30 year struggle, that the 10-hour workday became law. And here is Sarah 
Bagley's name appearing at the top of a second column on the 1846 petition. Massachusetts became the first state to pass the 10 hour workday for women and children. What happened to these young women after they left Lowell's Mills? Many returned to their homes and married. Others found new jobs just opening up for women. They traveled to Florida, Arkansas, and the Western states to help settle and build towns. Some became teachers, and a few started their own schools and libraries. Lydia Hall studied law and became an acting U.S. treasurer. Margaret Foley went to Italy and became a famous sculptor. Here's the a schedule here that you can check out. You might want to pause the video to, to look at it more closely. Harriet Farley and four other women became magazine editors. Harriet Hanson Robinson was one of the 30 mill girls to publish books. Lucy Larkin became a college teacher and a well-known poet. Sarah G. Bagley was a labor organizer and reformer and became the first female telegraph operator in the United States. She also opened a medical practice in New York. By the 1890s, young women from New England farms were going to college and had better job opportunities. Fewer came to work in the Lowell textile mills. In their place, immigrants from Ireland, Greece, Canada, Poland, Sweden, and other countries were hired. Here's a picture of Harriet Hanson Robinson. These men and women had come to the United States to get away from hunger and war in their country. They found stability in the United States and jobs in the mills. But by the 1930s, the mills began to close one by one. Other mills moved south where land and labor were cheaper. Today, many textile mill buildings remain in Massachusetts, but most no longer make cloth. Instead, they have been turned into housing, businesses, shops, and museums where visitors can go to learn about the life of the hard-working New England women. At one time, the mill girls were known as the most superior class of factory workers ever to be found. Here's a photo of immigrants such as Portuguese women replacing the New England workers. Since then, they have been honored for improving women's rights and helping to set the standards for working conditions in American factories today. Here's the clock tower in Lowell. All right, well, I hope you enjoyed today's read aloud, Ain't It Rockin'? Hopefully you learned a lot of things about the Industrial Revolution, particularly our local town of Lowell, Massachusetts. And today, maybe you've already checked it out, but make sure you check out our Industrial Revolution lesson today, because it totally has to go with the Lowell Mills girls, and it totally has to do with our local New Hampshire girls as well. All right, then. Make a great day, everyone.